Well, we're here at the CCA workbench, and Dave, undoubtedly tonight you are going to earn your money I hope talking so. about I, Marlins. Well, there's probably going to be some people who disagree with what I'm about to say, but that's the way it always is. Um, when, you're, when you're in Texas, when you're in Texas, uh, you know, there's a lot of water out there. It's a big empty, you know, there's, so the first thing you had to do is figure out when you're chasing Marlin, where, where you want to start. And you're going to be wanting to start on one of those oil rigs out there uh, or a structure that's not an oil rig, but something like uh, a weed line or uh, a C-mount or anything that'll hold bait. And once you find a place that holds bait, there's pretty much just three different ways to go about catching these blue marlins. And the, probably the most popular way these days is pulling a lot of teasers and doing the bait and switch with little ballyhoos and, and either little mackerels or sometimes even a small tuna when you get a big fish come up in the spread. And what you'll do is you'll pull big teasers like this. This is a Coggins Tato from Kona, Hawaii. Uh, it's a giant lure. You can actually put a hook in that if you'd like, but I would run that as a short teaser, you know, trying to get a fish, a big fish, because a big fish will come up close to the boat. They're not really afraid of the boat. They don't care about boats. They don't know what a boat is. And so a lot of times we put our stuff way back and we really don't have to. A big fish or a blue marlin will come to the boat. They're not afraid of the boat. So you don't have to worry about doing that. Um, they'll also pull uh, these big, dredges and whatnot this is what you hear about this is a, this is a dredge here a you mud open this yeah you can it, it's a mud is it flat going dredge to spring out and no it's, it's, got, it's got tape on it okay but yeah this is a big dredge that you'll pull this one has little fish on it but they run them with squids they'll run them with natural baits like mullets or whatnot one on each side a lot of times not so common in texas as it is other places although they're probably doing it a lot in texas now because it's spread all over the place I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that personally. If I was fishing in Texas, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna put out uh, lures if I'm not on a rig. Uh, I'll start by fishing with my lures because I can go faster. Now, if I got dredges in the water, I can't really go that fast. But if I have four or five lures out there, you know, I can go eight knots and cover a lot of ground looking for that good water or a fish, if I see a fish eating somewhere. You know, and then that, and that's when you'll change. But when you're using lures, probably it doesn't matter which lure you use. So I've got, as you can see, all different kinds. What I like my lures to do is go straight and right. stay in the water. And you can you can take you can look at any lure and pretty much just by its shape tell what it's going to do. That's probably the best lure in the world. That's a Moldcraft wide range. Doesn't cost that much. It's impossible to screw that thing up. It'll go straight as an arrow from four knots to 15 knots. 15 knots, you 15 can pull knots. that thing and it will stay in the water. And what makes it so good is that it's a truncated cone. Truncated? So, yeah, a truncated cone. How do you cone. spell that, Dave? Truncated. T-R-U-N-C-A-T-E-D. I think that's a rig rigism. <laughs> no, no. Truncated. And, and, and what it is, the hole's in the middle uh -huh. and it's got a long body. So that's what makes it go straight. You'll see some of these other lures like this one with a with a short little body and, and curves at his head, that making this thing's gonna wiggle, wiggle like crazy. Little short lures will wiggle, long lures will go straighter. If you're in really rough water, um, you can't pull lures really fast and or with a whole lot of action. For one thing, if your lure's going like this, like a lot of the Kona lures do where they fish in flat, calm water, you, that, you see that lure doing all kind of jerky things they got. Right. Marlin can come up there and give it that thing a couple of swats and then go Those away. Interest, yeah. But if it's going straight as an arrow and he can beeline on it and crush on it, that's what you want for your lures. So I got a question. I'm going to interrupt you because okay. this is really good stuff. The question is, you know, when what can a guy do to really increase his chances? Pull four wide ranges, mm -hmm. either in black and purple, mm -hmm. with like a seven or eight aught, a small hook. Hageman just is fishing in a tournament. And he asked me the same question. Hey man, I'm going to fish in this marlin tournament. You know, what's the best thing for us to do? We don't do it that often. You pull four wide ranges at eight knots, either black or purple and black, dark colors, and go eight knots with a seven knot lure in it and set your drag at like seven, seven pounds. Not real, real high, you know, seven pounds. And you'll hook those fish when they eat with those smaller hooks and a little less drag. And same thing and we that's do. Marlin. For, the same thing we do for tarpon, you know, go small on the hooks, easy penetration. Yep. All right. Rick, look at you making real words in the Rickisms. You go, man. You go. Yeah, man. Truncated <laughs> is a real word. It is.